In 2016-17, while 11% of railway's capital expenditure, CapEx, was funded by internal sources, in 2019-20, the ratio dropped to less than 1%. A 2015 committee on restructuring of railways had flagged that over-reliance on borrowings could exacerbate the financial situation of railways. Yet financial ratios have deteriorated over time. The operating ratio, the amount Indian Railway spends to earn Rs 100, has increased drastically over the years. In 2012-2013, it spent 90 rupees to earn 100 rupees. In 2019-20, it had to spend 98 rupees to earn 100 rupees. For the last two years, CAG has been highlighting how Railways is adjusting advance payments to manage its operating ratio. In 2017-18, for instance, Railways took advance payment from freight from NTPC and IRCON, which helped decrease its operating ratio from 102.7 to 98. Similarly, in 2018-19, it took an advance from NTPC and Concord to improve its operating ratio from 101.8 to 97.3. In the recent union budget, the government hiked capital expenditure by 35.4%. Of this 7.5 trillion rupees to be spent on capex, one in every five rupees will go towards the railways. Budget mathematics tends to indicate a revival. Data released by the government shows that receipts are expected to grow 18.8% over last year. In contrast, expenses will rise 16.6% in 2022-23, leaving the railways with 5,360 crore rupees extra for allocation to its other funds. The depreciation reserve fund is included in these calculations. The excess only accounts for 2.2% of the total receipts. It will be the highest in the last seven years. The calculations are predicated on the back of a 13.6% rise in goods and a whopping and unprecedented 31.8% rise in passenger earnings. In 2021-22, goods revenue grew 23% as the railways cornered a significant share of the freight traffic. Though the railway seems to be pulling through in budget mathematics, a business standard analysis shows that the space for India's largest public sector operator is shrinking. Barring last year, when passenger revenues jumped 191% on the back of a low base, passenger revenues have never grown in double digits in the last six years. Growth in goods revenue last hit double digits in 2017-18. Sundry earnings, money the railway earns from advertising and leasing, were declining even before the pandemic hit the sector. The railways now expects these earnings to grow 42% to 10,000 crore rupees in 2022-23, a target last reached in 2016-17. Further analysis shows that the railways has never met its budget target for passenger earnings in the last six years and has even fallen short of its sundry earnings target. The failings are evident on the expenditure side as well. Even though the allocation has been reduced in terms of depreciation reserve fund, the railways has not even met those targets. The finances that the railways accounts for are coming from gross budgetary support and extra budgetary resources, not from the transport utilities' own revenues. Here's what needs to be done to get the railways back on track. The share of railways with respect to road is declining. In 1950, it was 80%. Now it has declined to 10% in passenger and 27% in freight. Uh, need is to increase it. And how to increase it? There are constraints. One first biggest constraint is capacity. Uh, number of lines required number of double lines required, number of quadruple lines required, the speed of the goods train, speed of the passenger trains, and terminal capacity. Another thing which has affected is inadequate expansion of container traffic. Uh, still, you see the container traffic forms only 4 to 5% of the total freight carried by railways. High dated traffic is almost gone out of railways. And logistics, say a customer demands go down to go down, which should be avoided. So railway's ability to tie up terminals, uh, transportation from go down to terminals, book from go down to go down, this has affected. And, and lastly, the policy, say policy to take whatever is offered, whatever is whether it is small, whether it is high rated, and then make a plan to take it in the reasonable time. Appropriation to the Development Fund, Capital Fund, and Rashtriya Rail Sandraksha Kosh, partly won by the central government, have all declined. 
In the last six years, the average appropriation to these funds has just been 30% of the budgeted amount. In many years, the appropriation was even less than 20% of the budgeted amount. Although the railways was to contribute 5,000 crore rupees each to the Rashtriya Rail Sanraksha Kosh for track repair works, by the end of this year, its contribution will be just one-fourth of the budgeted estimates. Instead, the expenditure is increasingly being shifted to extra budgetary resources. This year's demand for grants has also made a provision for the railways to contribute some amount towards debt servicing. The centre gave the service provider a break on debt servicing given its dwindling finances. How much of that the organisation can achieve will only be apparent in the coming months. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.